Nigeria is on the path of issuing new Naira notes. The CBN made this public a few days ago with the intention to check inflation, ransom payment, and boost the value of the Naira. I welcome you to today's event, which is to officially launch the new Naira bank notes. This morning marks a major milestone in our efforts to solve the numerous challenges facing the management of our legal tender currency with the unveiling of the three redesigned denominations of 1,000 Naira, 500 Naira, and 200 Naira banknotes. Some of these challenges primarily include, first, a significant hoarding of banknotes by members of the public Continue to use them as legal tender as ordered by the Supreme Court of Nigeria. No deadline can render them worthless ever. Babushaka Nusan Muhimman Shin the Mutin Shin. Nigeria is in a very terrible time right, right now. You understand? We are in a very terrible right now. And people are passing through a very tough time too. Then, what I see in this is that, according to the CBN governor, I think he has a brilliant idea. And uh, I think if we can give him a little bit of patience and then ready to welcome the idea, I think we can have a light after the tunnel. So, but the hardship is so tough right now. People are so angry. And then, I know what they are passing through. Even myself is affecting my industry too. Every business is in Nigeria. They are suffering right now. Even with the economy. Not to talk of when they will now redesign it. The people, the government is now forcing everybody to do cash, do cashless policy. So, but like I said, it's a welcome. You just need to persevere so that uh, you can enjoy it at last. <laughs> Sorry, 
I've been looking for cash since morning. So this is the third. Uh, even I, I can't see cash at the bank. The uh, at the ATM, ATM did not give money. Then I went to. Uh, I tried to transfer on my phone. No service. I went to one uh, uh, POS, POS, all this bagger. It's not, it's not, it's not working. They said there is no service. Kaga ya zuni zia na je na shira kuda wani wuda a chicken POS. An shira kudina dubu a shirinda biya da dari biya. Kuma hari yo mutuni ya bega kudisi mimi moga an anga an shira kuda a chicken akat na wa. Babu ne yendeze ni na bora kaswa na wudina sena na na zojida hari yenzo abu na kigea maka bansa mo kudina kuma na je bank. I could lie the Yawa, Kumutan the Yawa. To Bama, no, I shouldn't be here. Me, Kumayaka Mati, you reverse a wagina, co one thing against by Gansiba. By reversiba, Harriers, Maganaka, Maka, and Harriers by Avon by Dava. Kumanaja Bank, Nisiga Chicken Bank Babu. Everybody is angry with the government because we queue for what? For your own money that is in your bank, you queue for it. Government collected all our money. They told us to deposit all our money into the bank. That after the thirty-first, they will give us back our money. But now you cannot access your own money. Which kind of government is this? Right now, most of the time I move without a dime in my pocket. You can imagine a man like up in my walking on the road without without having a dime. Now to tell you, I don't want to go deeper to my homes, but as a man. A grown-up man walking in, along the road, no dime in his pocket. But that does not mean I should, I should, I should, I should, I should misbehave. That does not mean I can't rethink. There are two ways to life. You understand? There are two ways to life. There are times of that the, the, the word says there's time for hardship. There's time for joy. Let's let's just take sacrifice. That's why I said we need sacrifice in this country. Like I heard somebody that this United stop got issues that we were discussing with a friend. He said a friend went to an hospital, a, a chemist. He said he wanted to buy buy drugs because of uh, this Naira issue. He couldn't he couldn't transfer the money in time. And the man who is a chemist saw a man that is sick because of money. You can you can within your neighbor you cannot help. That's a problem in this country. We are not ready to help ourselves. We are not ready to persevere. You understand? Then this is where we are in this mess. And those people who are ready to help you, and those people who, after helping you, you mortgage, you mortgage, you mortgage, you mortgage your, 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 yourself to them. Because the only people who are helping people now, physically, that is open in Nigeria are politicians. You understand? They are the ones helping people. They are the ones helping. If you know a politician now, you, you, can, you, you can tell you to be coming to his house, Take 1,000 naira today, take 2,000 naira tomorrow, give you rice. Is that the kind of help you want? This naira scarcity, I get the tea that they do us. On the low, normally, I never would talk, so you'll be like, I'll cry. Because you get a belly, the pepper will be like, I'll never see you shops this morning. This is the third place. This is the third place. No service. And I need, I need cash. It's because I need cash to give my children. Probably you were used to having to give people cash for transactions and all that, but at this point you can't give the cash. And you know, beyond the cash too, I also felt that the banking system did not actually help right now because you had incidences of where you do transfers and they deduct the money from your account, but they do not remit it to the other person. You have to go back and forth to see how they can reverse and all that. And I also think it has also affected a lot of businesses. There are certain businesses that apart from people who sell perishable items, right? And because there was no money in circulation, they could not sell their wares, they could not sell their products. It's, it's really a very tough time for me. But I would say, when it's government who is in position to regulate rules and regulation in our country, say, these are, these are our experiences, these are the informations that we had, and these are the way to go about it. Definitely, we touch the people because they are government people. Not human, not animals. And those things, the law is meant for us. The reason, the pro and con of it is for us. 
So why do, why can't we wait? As I am now, I'm selling food. I'm selling Indomie. My customers are paying me in transfers. They are selling 200 naira. They are selling 100 naira. They are selling 500. How am I how am I going to collect the money? How am I going to collect the money? If I want to collect my money, they will say the charges is much. I want to collect 5,000 naira. They are even 1,000 naira. How am I going to grow in my business? Why does the country killing its citizens? Oppressing citizens, why? There's no, they are not giving us food, money, shelter, nothing, nothing. They don't offer a job. Our children are there going to school without no qualification. If they go going out, no job, nothing for them. Why? Bankers there, bank managers, even the, the counselors, the police officers oppressing us, a citizen of this country. Why? Why am I a citizen of this country? Now, because as you can see here, yeah, there is a lot of crowd. As to my surprise, I want to see some political daughters and sons around us here. That is what I want the government to be very careful of. Even the son of the state government, the son of the commissioner, the son of the so-called PS, they are not here now. So that I want to pay, I transfer. I want to transfer. I want to transfer. I want to Hello, <laughs> I <laughs> 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 I <laughs> See just now, self now transfer what I do yesterday to today. The money never see reflect. See the show processing. So I'm gonna want more take up. Guess who is that? Mochira could do that. Me and find the PO is in it. Money I'm a mochira could do much. I can move on. One look is they they know now man could do half it. I'm a bazaar man siva. But if you go with them, one one check come as they go. I'm a kaga. When I want to have a kaga, I'm a mochira could do chicken. A chicken way and a kaga niko. I'm a mochira could do chicken way and a kuma. Okay, how how you you how you move on the drama soon so you see him on now. The drama soon so. I come on the yard to yard yard chase and do kayan dubude dubude the rebiat. Yeah, ahanu na the PJ yam fan the POS. Amma yam aso yichira yichira kudinsi. Kaga ni masabo kudina kuma yata fira kaya na kaga wona badadi. Na anche lo kisinen ambor muna muna kase kudumu wona baze faroba. As I do like this. I know if to even withdraw the money in my own account, I know if you get them. Because any POS I go, they tell me say no, no, uh, no cash. Any POS I go, no cash. Even bank in say, bank say no open. I don't want to go away, and I suppose I don't go away like this. No money. I get money for account, I know if you get them. 
So we do transfer for both say the good time say they not the color transfer. I want my own, my own, Dobayanda <laughs> Abuna na ye na karba cha chikun kudina. Mon lo ko zen je mamba zen samuba. Yo juma ba wo nyo ala ma tutori e ba ba ja pe ko ya lo ni. Ta ba di lo la die kin kin ni ma se. Nti mo se list ko to nko kan. Deski abuna ne ke pi o se nzu. Nde wo jam pi o se nzu muta suna zuwa. Suna suna se a wo je na. Ka ga ni suna zuwa suna se a wo je na. Amma duka da 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 yo won su suna ka wakati ne. Well, uh, the situation in the country is very, very, uh, uh, it's not satisfactory at all because things is difficult for someone to want to spend money and he couldn't, you know, spend it. It's, uh, it's not something that is welcome at all because uh, it's, it is making life to be boring and difficult to some extent. Leadership problem is a very problem problem you have in Nigeria. You understand? But like I said, we have had leaders in this country in the past. We have people like Dr. Nam Dazikwe, we have people like Chief Obafemi Awunowo. Leadership at times is a spiritual gift. At times I would say it. It's a spiritual gift. And when who is a leader? Somebody who is ready to sacrifice himself. Somebody who is ready to sacrifice himself, not just sacrificing, doing the right thing for his people. Why do we find ourselves here in this very position we find ourselves? Because our leaders have betrayed us. They turned leadership to become a kind of court among themselves who are the leaders in different, in the, in different positions. Just because of their selfish means. They're not, taking care of, they're not taking care of those people that they are leading, rather than they are taking care of themselves and their chronics. So that's where leadership fails in this country. That's where we are, we are in this mess. I, I think for me, um, the sincerity of our um, politicians is necessary. Like you see, um, if you're not sincere, you might be doing something and people question your motive. Even when what you're doing is right, people might still think you're doing it for the wrong motive. If the central bank had you know, um, implemented this policy as that went to, I don't think we'll be having this problem, but the problem is because they waited till we are just so just few days to the election when they implemented this policy. Yes, some people might say it also helped in Corbyn, but I mean vote buying and all that. But I feel that uh, we should do things at the right time, right? You should. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait until it is convenient for you, or when you think it is convenient for you before you do it. This is a decision that has affected more than 200 million Nigerians and you can't just do um, these things because you want to get back at you know, private politicians and all that that are vote buying. There are other ways you can actually use to check vote buying without necessarily implementing that policy then, alright? The EFCC, the economic and um, um, financial income from um, EFCC is the um, um, organization that is in charge of you know, financial crisis and all that. They could have come out and probably get into the streets, you know, trap this politician. That is their job. So you're trying to use the Nara scarcity to help them. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, it might be profitable, but at the long run, um, the masses are the ones that are going to be at the front. And all these things has been piled up. That's why you see, and where you, where people lack, where you see the the, the, the lack of uh, leadership, you see so many things that you will not like to hear about, like the killings, like the bandits, like the, uh, 
poverty we have in the country. Who, are, who created it? People who you are portioned in a position that they are supposed to do the right thing for the people, create jobs, make the environment friendly with themselves, know what is the problem of their, their community, and do whatever the community wants them, ask them to do. But no, our leader is now, I have my money, and I, sm I smuggle myself in, in one way or the other, get to the position, and after that, I forget about my responsibilities to my people. There's also the issue that we should be looking about is corruption because we, if you're charged with a, uh, a responsibility as an agency, you are supposed to be able to carry out. And when we have corruptions that are weak and people can't trust this, I mean we have institutions that are weak and people can't trust their decisions, you cannot grow. You need to make sure that your institutions are strong, people can believe in them when you have an EFCC, EFCC should be able to do their job, not minding whose ox is God. That is the reason we don't want the EFCC to do that, because we don't believe in them. We believe probably they can buy them over and all that. We see there's corruption in the EFCC. We don't want to go into that, but I'm trying to say that is why we have institutions, so that we can do things systematically. We don't have to wait to probably use the CBM policy to checkmate the politicians that have excess money. When there's a provision for the EFCC to be able to handle that, they know who these politicians are. How many of them are having this money in their house? They're just a pocket full. So the politicians and the EFCC can actually get to them instead of putting the 200 million Nigerians under this pain just because you want to get a few politicians whom the EFCC can actually handle if they are sincere with their job. And because most of them also do not have the facility to receive transfers, they have either to probably um, lose their goods if they are perishable or probably forced to sell below their market rate, just be able to dispose them and not having them lose everything entirely. So personally, I feel it has like, affected commerce, it has affected transaction. Kagamu has a code was to the account. To the Suntas, yeah, the yes, you do, you do, you do, you do, you do, you Kuwa iye iye sama akat. Ba mo da da akat. Aku usu zasu zua nang waje na waje sira kaswana. Se sitembe ni da ala ya zami ya zami musia kaswana. Neche ni de geskia yon sira wande eke da akat. Ko wande eke da pio usi. Ko wande zey yeye transfer. Atanya hodi Nigeria safe. As it did like this, and I didn't knew money they bring call like this. Do it affect us. We not feel we do our own money. Say we dey buy our own money. This new money matter now, now another SSU. Just imagine, say I want to withdraw 100,000. They tell me say now 30,000 for charges. Can you imagine? This thing that affects me badly to the extent to even pay transport, go national stadium for train itself, no problem now. So every day, I the chair go, I the chair come back. You just imagine, you not know, be saying I want their fit. I know they find that kind of fitness. Which guys suffer with that one? I don't check tire now. The money now, imagine now, I want to go. Uh, seller, now see check and one culture check like checking. No, it's not good. They should do something about it. I don't know what to do now. The situation is so bad. Whatever I want to do, whatever I want to do, I don't believe in going to a place, demolishing houses, breaking bottles, you understand know, those kind of vandalism art. I'm not part. There are people who do that. You know, that's why we say human beings we are not the same. You know, it depends on how you want to express yourself and you are not happy. I don't think burning banks, you know. Uh, rioters action, I don't think it is necessary. Of course, I understand that people are expressing themselves, they are venting their angers, but I think to the point of burning down, you know, financial institutions and, you know, creating, um, you know, chaos, it is not, um, we don't really have to go that far. We can actually have healthy protests and go and, you know, register our displeasure, you know, uh, 
about these policies and the challenges we are facing, but not to the point of killing and running the financial institution. But um, like those people that are doing that, that's the way. And you can easy, you can easily find out all over the world. What you what you said now is not only in Nigeria. When government does what is not too uh, okay by people, you see some set of people coming out in the in a bad way that you feel the government themselves will know what they need. So that's the way they want to show their their own grievances about, and that's how they know how to go about that. Uh, yes, that, well, that's what I'm saying. Is what the, the action they took, which is to bring down bond banks. I had instance, we had um, one in Abel, Abel Kuta, mm. where a particular bank was attacked and you know, someone got shot, and you know, you know, all those things is because you know there was nobody listening to the masses. They could not. They, there was nobody they could communicate to you go to the bank, the bank says they don't have anything to say. So there was nobody to talk to them. So that was when I felt the central bank probably using all the you know communication channels we have or the National Orientation Agency would have engaged the people. By engaging the people, talking to the people, you can calm them down pending when the whole thing goes back to normal. This is not the first time we're having a Naira design, all right? So why is this one peculiar? Well, because there was you know the closeness to the political exercise, right, and the inability for people to assess even the daily withdrawal limit that was given by CBM, which was the 20,000 Naira withdrawal limit. So it was not there. So I felt that at that point, communication would have been, you know, a better way to manage the whole situation. Okay, I think the Naira redesign by the Central Bank of Nigeria is timely, but I feel the um, the challenge it has was when it was introduced, right, towards the election period, and um, in as much as we have seen the benefits of this redesign, there are some people who believe that it is targeted at politicians, and their opinion is that it shouldn't have been introduced you know, prior to this you know, election. I quite agree with you that the policies is so tough right now. You understand? The only problem I I can see clearly is that the implementation of it by the by the CBN governor was uh, was very done in a very hard harsh way. You understand? The implementation was very harsh. But like I said, at times. When you want to get things right, such a country like Nigeria, where I've been for a long time, I know Nigerians are very, very difficult people to control. So at times, situations like this will arise, that people will be forced. And when you are forcing people, you, you, you understand what it means. People will have to feel the pains so that some of them could get it, know what is right. Nigerians need to know, tell them what is right at a particular time. So. Right now, the policy is tough. The policy is very bad. Is uh, the policy right now? Sorry, the policy is not too bad. So it's just the implementation. So, at the, at, at, at what I will advise people is to bear it. And then the promise, they promise us that after the after the election, everything will come to be normal. Um, on a total scale, I feel it's a welcome development because one of the, um, the reasons the central bank is engaging in this is to be able to know the amount of money that is in circulation and also to also discourage holding of our, you know, our currency, which I think they have successfully achieved. This policy uh, is not good. We're supposed to do this thing gradually, that when we spend the money, both the old and the new, concurrently, so that they will start withdrawing the old one, little by little. Yeah, I, from that aspect, I think the challenge is mainly with the um, withdrawal limit and the time frame for the withdrawal limit. I know it was um, uh, 500,000 now for you know, um, businesses and I think 100,000 now for individuals every week. And that is not actually the problem. The problem was that a lot of those, um, you know, but I mean, a lot of these people were not able to assess this money as it went to. You had issues like the POS not working, the banks not being able to dispense this cash. So I think the CBN to a very big extent probably will be said not to have been transparent 
with how much money was actually in circulation. You know, um, certain people believed that some bank MDs were moving this money to politicians instead of giving it to the public that actually needed it for their daily transactions. While CBN was saying that they actually have supplied this money to the banks, that is the commercial banks, so that they can release it to the public for um, business and transactions. But because of the timing which we talked about earlier, which was the election, and we know that election involves money. So it is also believed that some of this money ended up in the pocket of the politicians who need a large sum of this money to conduct their elections. That is partly probably one of the reasons we also notice the scarcity you know, out there. So right now, what I see is that the, 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 the implementation, like I said, is wrong at this time around because it's falling in between the election time. And, and who are those people pressurizing this? Those who have their money, the money stacked at home. They put deadlines here for the money. The money pack itself, not even they see collect itself. Anywhere you go, you don't get POS, even banks, no cash, no cash anywhere. And whereas these politicians, it's the same people we see who put this money scarcity, we make us they suffer, they suffer. Then they get billions of naira, millions of naira notes. We be like say they on their position, whether they spend, any as they like. Who are they? You can imagine when they say somebody have over five, ten trillion in his house. In fact, I don't know. I don't know that kind of person. In a society where you have, when you have people, individual person, you know, having such amount of money in 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 in, in, in a well or whatever they say, see where they kept it. Let him identify those people. We don't know them. It's wrong. So, and for the fact that. CBN is saying that the reason why they are doing it is because of the economic issues. Personally, I think that is where we need to begin to appreciate the roles of certain government institutions. So I feel for such um, central bank policies to be effective, there needs to be communication with the people. I think the central bankers probably needed to have worked with the National Orientation Agency to be able to take the message across there. You know, let the people know what is happening. If you notice at the point, people did not know what was happening. It was like nobody was talking. So you probably hear from these people that the daily withdrawal limit is 20,000. You also hear that it is 10,000. You know, it's like you're just hearing all, all kinds of unverified information through the social media. So I felt probably what the Apex Bank should have done to nip that in the mud was to have to leave that in the board was to have communicated with the people. So there was a communication gap between central bank and the people. Is it the, the way the poor down trodden people? Look at the Western world. We are traveling down, down there to see for greener passion. Why are we going, going there? It's because the, because the economy is brilliant. There's job security. Their government is after life and properties. There's good economy. And I, that I'm sitting down, I want my country to be like that. How, how do we do that? It's through the economy. So CBN government made me to understand that at this crucial point, the economy is down. Everything is not working in Nigeria. Things are not going well. And since it's, that's the strategy, the CBN government, I believe in that's what, what he did. And he's a specialist in it. So I think he's coming up with a, with a, with a strategy right now that Nigerians will feel it. Nigerians will feel it and then we think, I think at the end of it, uh, when we embrace it, I think at last we are going to laugh. So I did not support it. No. I'm not coming. Yeah, but I want you to have a good old man. That's why I can't even have a share in the title. I'm not going anywhere. See you at the Access Bank, baby. Access Bank for the April. They load it here and finish. Then they, they load, they, 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 they withdraw for themselves. Spy customers full outside. They're not good. They're not good. They're not good looking for customers. See customers, see the gates. Customers full. They're not good. Other people load. Enter inside, go withdraw money. Then they inside, they withdraw for themselves. Staff, bank staff. If this country, and they wait to make the country better, see them. Only bank staff, they withdraw all of them. Hands off, we withdraw like 100,000 of people for the new currency. And, and customers full outside. Customers full outside, they lock them outside again. I'm, I'm, I'm still saying it. Economic makes a country. Security of life and property makes a country. These are one of the reasons. Because when, when the CBN governor went to the House of, uh, House of uh, Senate committee on uh, all these issues that we are discussing right now, 
it made them to understand that one of the reasons why they are doing this is that money, our money is in, is, is in, is in, in circulation and it ought not to be. Money is in the hand of some, 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 some wealthy people in Nigeria. There's nothing wrong with people who are wealthy. I'm not against the wealthy people. But at least there should be a law. There should be something guide that makes a, con a Nigeria a country. Not every people just doing what they like because they believe they are superpower or whatever. So me, I'm not in support of anybody keeping money in his house up to, up to trillions. What are you doing that for? The purpose of money is to move around from Mr. A to Mr. B to Mr. C to Mr. D. If, if you have a good motive, I think if that money, is, if you if you if you really know what money is, you, money is not something you stack in, in in a place where where you are not making use of anything in public. So this money, this thing, this 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 first way that the 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 the, 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 the Serbian governor has come, I think, is a welcoming idea. <laughs> I said because we were doing it in the, during the election time. If what this thing is not done during an election time, what will you say? Nobody will say it's political. I, I think I, I think you get my message. Yes, you know, there are a lot of um, stories flying around. Certain school of thought believe because Emefile wanted to go for, you know, the presidency and he failed. He wanted to use it to get back at, you know, who got the ticket for the APC. Another school of thought believe that Buhari was not uh, in support of, you know, Tunumbo's, you know, presidential ambition and he wanted to use that to kind of stifle his opportunity and all that. But if we look at it holistically, we begin to see that, you know, this is, even if he has his own political undertone, it is something that is long overdue that is just the truth all right so if we go back to when the uh, design was the last time it was held we we're supposed to have had another redesign so actually it was even late so i would not want to subscribe to the fact that it was politically motivated so i don't know anything about about that i'm not a politician even if it's political do nigeria needs to sell their conscience do we need to sell our conscience did vote buying is it not part of the law the new electoral law they have signed why are we dodging the right thing in this country? Why are we dodging the right thing? They said vote buying is not accepted. And most of these politicians now that are crying, most of the people that are even crying, that they said they have their money in the banks. Many of those people now that they are saying they have money in the banks, is that money enough for them? When politicians still come, they will say they, they won't know, they won't think, they won't even think that they have money in the banks. They are still going to collect money. That's the corruption we are saying. I want to subscribe to the fact that, you know, this is a responsibility of the Apex Bank and I think there is no policy or there is no law stopping them from doing it when they did it. The only challenge I know we had was that there was not enough money to go around even while we're having this. And do not also forget that there is the drive for cashless policy. So it's more like these two ideas are kind of intertwined. So we want to encourage people doing cashless transaction instead of work transaction. Do not also forget that this has also helped in other ways that a lot of people have begun to notice that the cases of kidnapping has gone down drastically since this policy was introduced. So it's both ways, but what we want to ask ourselves is this, um, what are the advantages of this, you know, policy and what are the disadvantages and which one outweighs each one. I think the advantage of this policy far, far outweighs the disadvantage, if you ask me my opinion. According to what I heard, he said he has a veto power. He has the power to redesign currency. So since that power is bestowed on in, in the CBN on the CBN government, I think at times you know you have leaders who take things take things in the way that people might not feel comfortable. So right now, the decision of the CBN right now to do this at this very point in time, I think people are not happy. So that is part of what a lot of uh, of has, has been clamoring for, you know, a weakened institution, right? So it is believed that before we um, have a full adoption of the, you know, the cashless policy, we need to have a very strong technological framework to drive the cash 
cashless policy and all that it means that we need to have a viable fintech sector that can help with your mobile transactions we know that that is not there at the moment and the level at which we've had internet penetration is going to be very difficult for that policy to fly right now because you have to consider those who are living in the remotest part of the country where probably there's even no network at all so you have to also consider the fact that a lot of them like you rightly said do not have bank accounts so i feel what the central government is trying to do from my own perspective is they are trying to prepare us right to probably see that this is the era we are getting into so it also leaves opportunity for maybe entrepreneurs and people who can plug in into that sector. I feel there's a role of the private sector in helping the government achieve this as well, like taking advantage of the entrepreneurial opportunities that this will present. Like you said, this is not the first time we've done. Yeah. You know this president, uh, president we have? Did it. Did it, I think, around 1980. If I can guess right, around 1980, 84, 85, when it came in. President Mamadou Buhari was the military head of state in 1984 when Naira notes were last redesigned. The then military government wanted to ensure that funds allegedly looted by politicians from the toppled democratically elected government were trapped in old notes. That was 38 years ago and the value of the Naira at the forex markets then was approximately one Naira to one dollar. Understand? But then, we, we Nigeria was not too. Uh, uh, we are not in. We are. We, we are. We are not so much divided like we are today. Nigeria is so divided that uh, for anything to work right now, if you are not dog-headed person, you can't. You can't get it right. So for the fact that CBN has the veto power to do that, personally, I think he's doing his work. So I won't say what he has done right now. The law permits him to do that. So, but the way he does it is is wrong. And you understand? I thought people should be should be should be they should have gone. They, I think they should have done so many orientation. You know, let people carry people along for a long time. But this time around, that they are doing it, why people are complaining is because it's all in between the election time. And from the CBN governor, they said. They want to use it to stop vote buying. Yeah, because you know you have to see the issues of kidnapping that has gone down drastically. Now you also you probably would have seen situations where people were holding our cash, right? It costs money to print these currencies, and when people have these currencies and they hold it in the sock away, they stash it somewhere, they don't get to use it. It's not in circulation. It becomes a waste. All right. So the idea of currency is that you should be using used for transaction. You should be able to go around. And when that purpose is forfeited, it becomes a waste. So the reason central bank did this was to be able to allow those. You could hear stories of people having up to twenty billion stashed in their houses. And you don't want to have that kind of money in your house when you're not a central bank or a commercial bank. So much money should be deposited in the bank. Like I said, our electoral, our new electoral act has just been signed. And when something is signed as a law, for you to implement it, you must use, you must use force. Nigerians don't want to take things easily. They don't want to listen easily to their leaders. You know, understand because of the way we are diversely divided understand so we don't actually come to have a common goal if we have the interest to have a common goal i think what we are having right now we won't be nigeria will not be under pressure like everybody's very of what is happening we are suffering the pain is too much we are divided yeah i think um there's a there's agency that is charged with the responsibility of overseeing overse overse issues like that you have the ILP. EFCC, which is the Economic and Financial Commission, Crime, Crime Commissions and all that. I think this is when they have to step up to their duty, right? If you're probably found wanted for breaking um, um, certain financial um, you know, um, rules and all that, they should step in and probably do their job from there. That is my own opinion. The EFCC should go out and do their job. There are people who are breaking you know, their policies that stipulate how much you should have kept at home and how much you should you know, move around with. So if you see people who are breaking these rules, you should be able to step in and you know, take it off from there. Let us face the reality. Nigeria like postponing the evil days. Anybody wants to turn this country to a brilliant country will start it at any time. There's no law that 
that that that that is ready to deal with the necessity of any society that people will not be affected. Let's deal, let's deal with the necessity we have in our society and move on as a country. And if you don't want to want to move on to a country, let's leave that to God and uh, let's see how God will do that. But if we want to remain a country where we still call Nigeria, we, we appoint our senators, we appoint our governors, we appoint the presidency, and we are not ready to have pain, have pain. Americans sacrifice for, their, for the goodness of America today. The ordinary Nigerians who don't even have a background, they are now going there to enjoy. I don't see where in my, in my country that things are not done the normal way and want this country to go. You understand? So, we, we could say it's political. Even if it's political, let us deal with those politicians that are doing things in the wrong way. Nigerian politicians have actually weaponized poverty and they know how to use this to buy votes from the electorate when the election is around the corner. So in a country where a lot of people do not have a you know, good source of livelihood and you know, where you can just buy someone vote with just 10,000, 5,000 and their likes, when politicians have this, this money in their purse, they can actually use it for those purposes, right? So if you look at the last election, you see that even though they wanted to have bought people's food, but there was no cash to go around. If Nigerians are suffering it, fine, because they, they, they are, the politicians are still coming to meet them. They are their tools. Have you, have you seen any politician that is moving around that you don't see human, the Nigerians following them? When politician comes out to campaign, you see crowd there. Are they not Nigerians? Because I, I, can, I, I, I could believe. Politicians are not shouting. They are not in pain. They have their money stuck somewhere. But Nigerians are crying now. But we are saying now, now because the majority of the Nigerians are suffering it. And when the politician comes out to campaign, who are, who are the people you see there? They are Nigerians. They will hail them, praise them, and you don't want them to suffer it now. We will suffer it together. If you have money, you don't have access to it. You want to buy, you cannot buy. Those people who are selling, they cannot sell. Yes, it is tied to poor governance. Not only in politics, in our, in our, in our, in our, in our daily activities, in our daily life. A lot of people have learned from this thing now that cashless is one of the good ideas. Cashless uh, 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 means of uh, uh, money transaction is good. But to me, I don't, I, don't, I don't actually say the government should deprive people who wants to use, uh, carry their money, take their risks all around and take their money, put their money in their houses or take money around for whatever they want to do. That's their own problem. And I think it is, um, uh, it is also seen in how um, we are doing economically as a country. So uh, I think the clamor for a new Nigeria, for a new crop of leadership, is um, also hinged on the fact that we want to see changes, you know, in all these institutions so that, you know, we can have a better country. What this man is doing right now, what Buari has done, is to show us to that, to us that Nigerians, you need to be wise. Nigerians, we need to be wise. Those People that are giving us problems are our leaders in every every every, every position they, they, they find themselves. You understand? So me, many people will say, well, it's not good, it's political, it's politician, it's, it's, it's political. Fine, it's political. Fine, it's political. And there is an assurance that it's just going to take a while. I know a lot of people might have had problem with it. Some people might have, they are dead right now. Some are in the hospital, living one way or the other. You understand? And some are deprived of their rights for their daily means. It's affecting Nigeria generally. So, are you seeing it stopping after the elections? I hope so. I presume it, it will stop after the election. I yes, I'm very, very hopeful. I'm hopeful because I. Um, if you watch the last concluded election, you will see that it used to be that the youth used to have a large voting party. They don't engage in politics, they don't get involved in you know, voting and all that, but it has changed. Uh, it, it, it has to. So I feel we're getting into a new era where um, the youth are becoming politi more politically aware and they're also getting involved in politics. And you can see how politicians right now, a lot of them who were senators before could not be returned, right? So it tells you that the youth are participating. So I think there is a change and there is a hope for a you know, breath of fresh air in the near future. Uh, it must happen because if it doesn't happen, then uh, life is meaningless.